Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Diachronic Heroes here on this Destiny 2 video and today we're going to be showing the weekly reset for uh, November 5th, 2020, okay, I almost said October, but it's November 5th, 2019, showing the weekly reset, everything that has reset, everything going on with the Festival of Lost new stuff that is happening this week. So the biggest, most notable thing this week, first of all, there is going to be Iron Banner, so if you want to go and do this season's Iron Banner, get your Pinnacle Rewards, you can do that this week. Some note about that, they're going to be a adjusting the pinnacle rewards from a plus one to a plus two and a couple of other things so way to claim those pinnacle rewards so if you're doing the iron bounty bow iron bounty iron bounty iron banner bounties hold those until thursday when they give the hot fix and then you can claim them for better rewards uh outside of that there's also something new on the calendar the first raid challenge for the new uh, raid is actually going to be released today when we get over to Hawthorne we'll be able to take a look at that Obviously, I have zero idea how to do that, but we're gonna show it off anyways And then lastly this week is going to be increased Valor week So two times during the weekend three times during the weekend I would say completely that uh, Eva has exactly the same inventory nothing has changed from her inventory I'm still on the lookout to see whether or not that toothbrush does anything. I mean, uh, has anyone figured out what this is used for? Like, uh, is it gonna be the last week the last couple days? Is there some spider stuff? Has anybody found where the spider triumph is from? Moving on to the regular weekly reset, starting up with the Nightfalls and the Ordeal. This week will be the Strange Terrains. If you wanted to do all the crazy master, crazy Nightfall craziness that is available this week for, uh, for Not Chris. As for the regular Nightfalls, we have Tree Probabilities, the Cabal with the minigun at the end dropping the DFA hand cannon. After that, Will of the Thousands, Big Worm God Zol at the end, dropping the only transmet effect Nightfall Unique, which is Worm God Incarnation. And then lastly, you have Broodhold, which I thought was a PlayStation exclusive, but it has been a year since Forsaken has released, so I assume they're now releasing that to everybody, and uh, it's now in the Nightfall rotation. And the Nightfall Unique for this mission is currently unknown, because it never was a Nightfall before, because you couldn't use it on different platforms, and uh, this is the first time I've ever seen it in the Nightfalls. Fastest one is going to be Tree Probabilities, where you can run past almost literally everything in the entire mission, and then the highest scoring is going to be Will of Thousands. You've got a lot of elite enemies throughout. But you know what? Maybe Broodhold might have a higher point score, because it is a later DLC item, and... Uh, I've never tried it for Nightfall high scoring, so I, I don't know. Moving on to the Heroic Modifier for the week, which is going to be Arc Singe, which means everything is going to be Arc Singe this week. And the daily right now is going to be Blackout and Grenadier. Moving on to the Crucible playlist, we obviously have Iron Banner going on with its powerful gear in the Rotator playlist. You have 6v6 control, power advantage enabled. So if you have a higher power score, which includes, by the way, the Gate Lord's Eye, you're going to have some... Uh, good times in here. The other ones are going to be Momentum Control, still from last week. A very good game mode. You should definitely give it a try, and then uh, the last one's going to be Countdown. Moving on to Reckoning, obviously we have Arc Singe. Like I said, the daily right now is Brawler, which is a very poor daily to have, and the boss this week should be Likeness of Aura. So you have the option of getting that spare rations if you're still hunting it down, um, and I believe it's it's Likeness of Aura, I think last time was Swords. Moving on to the Flashpoint, we have Titan. You do your public events, Lost Sectors, and Heroic Adventures for a powerful gear. As for the Nightmare Hunter, this week we have uh, Skolas, we have Omnigal, and we have the Fanatics. If you want to complete any one of those bosses for any of the reasons that is available this week, oh look at that, you can actually just launch the, the dungeon from orbit. That That's a good thing, I didn't realize that that was a thing. How long has the Lectern had a weekly challenge? I don't remember it having a weekly challenge. And also, why is it at 25 out of 30? Moving on to Escalation Protocol. Last week was the Sniper Rifle. This week will be all three. Next week will be all three. And after that will be the Infamous Shotgun. Moving on to the Menagerie this week, showing everything that's going on here. The boss this week will be the Big Ogre, Arunuk, beloved by Kallus. The uh, current weekly for the normal mode will be Arc Singe, like I said, the daily being Blackout and Grenadier. And of course, when you switch it over to the uh, hard version, you're going to get some different modifiers with the same modifiers every single time. Uh, for a specific boss, we have Extinguish, Grenadier, Famine, and Solar Singe. This is a positive benefit. Probably the easiest week to actually complete the hard mode, a heroic version of a Menagerie. Wait a minute. I have an idea. I don't actually need to talk to Eververse. I can just go to my phone, whip out the Eververse store app, and talk to her that way. I don't even have to talk to her for real. <laughs> Alright, let, let's go to move on. Anyways, we're going to showing off Eververse, everything that she's got, everything that's going on. That's a nice looking skin. Um, and everything that is available for Bright Dust and all that, whatnot. Obviously, you have things like Shadow Strike and Basalt Toxic, the Looming Moon Transmat effect. You have the new uh, Desmodus ship, which looks like... Uh, one of those bats with the skeleton stuff in it, which is a very nice looking ship. I think this is a custom design for uh, 
models for ships too, so that's always nice to have. And then obviously you have the uh, Bone Boogie, which is just going to be one of those dances that you get for the season. Again, another hint is that this particular bundle right here can be purchased with Bright Dust. You can see in the tooltip there, for 6,000 Bright Dust, you can actually purchase the full set, uh, or you can buy it for 1,500 silver. This is the only big Bright Dust purchase, and it is per character per class, so you have to get on the right character to be able to purchase it. And then lastly, we have the Bright Dust section with a lot, oh, look at that, with a lot of different things you can buy. I knew they were going to be selling this for Bright Dust, uh, but you can have a lot of cool things. First of all, you have the Tombstone uh, emote, which is pretty straightforward you put a tombstone down flowers grow up and uh this will be really fun in the crucible because you can kind of just like uh, say hey you're dead you're dead son you got the uh, uh ghost shelf for public defender treasure hunter i'm glad the ghost shells are having a bit more randomness to it uh the other ghost shelf for speed demon public defender the ship we've seen the sparrow that everyone is harking about because it is literally a harry potter um is this a nimbus i don't know what this is but it's it's a sparrow and it's really, really cool. Some helpful hint here is that uh, when you buy this once, go to your collections, and then you can buy it like a bunch more times without bright dust, and you can get random rolls. And then lastly, you have the jack-o'-lantern mask, which I thought I had, but maybe not. And then finally, we have the uh, ghost projection, some spiders, and then the uh, the transmit effect that looks like crows, which is really cool. Just gonna, just gonna, just gonna, just gonna get a few of these. I mean, what else am I using about bright dust? I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. And I didn't even have to talk to Eververse that whole time. <laughs> right. Also, another thing, uh, the, the candy in the tree has reset, so if you wanted to get that candy and the, the chocolate in the tree, uh, it seems to have reset. So I got a confession to make, guys. I, I'm bored of this loot box opening thing, but we're gonna be doing just a loot box thing and not handling the giveaway and not. If you guys really like the giveaway, let me know if you wanted me to bring it back. But we're just gonna open a Prime Engram and see what we get. Hopefully it's something that I can use. Oh my goodness gracious, it is the literal last thing I needed. Let's go! We are in, we are in Pinnacle Gear territory. Let's go. It's such a well-made tower. I mean, for events in the past, they do a little thing here and there, but this is, uh, this really feels like going all out. Hey, look, more candy. Really feels like going all out because this is something different. The portal doesn't look like it's had much progress. Uh, it could be like more than a month before we actually get this portal completed. Uh, I wonder if it corresponds to something on the calendar. Moving on to Hawthorne's inventory, showing you everything that she does have available in her clan bounties, weekly raid challenges. I noticed the weekly raid challenge only has three options here, so we're going to see exactly how that turns out. But anyways, clan bounties, you got Gambit, you got Crucible, you got Raid with Clanmates, and finally the Ordeal with Clanmates, which is not a powerful gear, but uh, requires a lot of max level clan. As for the weekly raid challenges, starting off with the Last Wish raid, we have Summoning Ritual. Summoning Ritual is going to be the Kali challenge of the uh, Last Wish raid. So the first encounter, all you have to do is activate all all nine plates kill the three ogres that spawn in the middle every single time you do damage phase uh, to Kali. As for the Scourge of the Pass raid in the encounter before the boss, so the first section of the boss area, it's gonna be all for one, one for all. Basically, every player has to dunk each one of the three different colors at least once. And then lastly, Total Victory, which is in the boss area, first stage of the boss area, is going to be where you have to break the deception shield five times every single time you do a deception damage phase. I wonder what I'm gonna get. More useful things? That's right. All right. Did it just, it, it just said I needed a clan bounty. So I noticed that Hawthorne did not actually have the challenge for the Garden of Salvation, so I selected it on the map, and it literally says a challenge awaits. I don't know if this has always said this. I don't think it has, but this is new. Uh, this is a new way to do challenges, and I don't know what kind of challenge they're going to offer, and I don't know if there's going to be a rotating set of challenges or what week there is. Leftovers is the only thing that we get as information, and perhaps in the future, we're just gonna have to learn what leftovers means. Anyways, that's gonna be pretty much the end of the video. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions, any concerns. These guys are standing very dangerously next to an edge. I would not want to stand there, but uh, let me know. Yeah, that's the end of the video. Hope you guys did enjoy. Of course, my name has been Nightchronic, and I will see you guys on the next one.